All right. I'm oh. here. I appreciate you talking to me. Ah, you know, you fucking, at least you, you weren't afraid like the end cap that wanted to do the interview. Oh, that was the um the the podcast guy, right? Yeah. Yeah. He um he's associated with some like libertarian institute radio host as well. Um oh. Yeah, like you know, we backstop people, right? <laughs> fucking gonna see what the fuck is up, right? Who the fuck are you? Um, and yeah, like he he just he sent me a friend request, just like out of nowhere. Like he came into the server, didn't pass the welcome screen, sent me a friend request, and I just said DM the dude after you know he was checked out. And I'm like, homie, I don't you know I don't just accept friend requests. Like what you need. <laughs> and he's like, you know, uh, you know, podcast, I want to explain, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he said, I believe the path forward is all anti-state individuals, le whether left or right wing, putting down the hatred for each other and working together to achieve some sort of world that we would like to live in. I said, you know, like, well, I believe the left right paradigm is being able to coordinate and work together. I don't believe that all anti-state philosophies are compatible because <laughs> I knew at that point he was an end cap. Right. And it's like, just because you hate the state doesn't mean you're not going to recreate the state. So I've got 12 hours, I got 12 hours of material on YouTube dissecting right wing libertarian and uh, so-called anarcho capitalist theory. All right, back to uh, fucking like Mises, uh, M von Mises, and Hayek, and Nozick, and fucking Rothbard, and fucking the latest Hans Hermann Hoppe psychopath, that ethno state fascist piece of crap that he is. Um, yeah, yeah, it's like I I will happily have a conversation with a lot of fucking people, up to and including actual fascists, but I don't talk to ANCAPs usually. They're they operate okay. they I'm operate in honest. bad faith. Bad faith. There was a lot of what you just said that I don't understand. I'm not like huge into all of the theory and stuff. I haven't read all those, of the books. Those, so a lot those of, like, names, especially... uh, those names are essentially okay. So von Mises and Hayek are economists uh, uh, of uh, a particular bent. They're uh, anti-empiricist. Uh, von Mises and Hayek basically uh, uh, put forth a let's let's just say a hypothesis and they maintain that no amount of data can refute their theorems and so like fundamentally the underpinnings that's, for right that's, yeah that's anti-intellectual yeah it's it's literally anti-empiricism um and so like when you talk about like right-wing libertarianism and so-called anarcho-capitalism it is founded upon von mises and hayek's theorems and they are a hundred percent anti-empiricism anti-science and so you like that's your starting position right like that's where you start they believe in natural law they believe in praxeology it's fucking it's crazy and then it just gets crazier as you move some of these iterations like rothbard is the one who created rothbard had a lot to do with like capturing the term libertarian that used to mean something else and turning it into what it means in america he's also the one that created the term anarcho-capitalist and he admitted it's bad faith Right, it, we are doing it intentionally to like move, like move into a sphere of influence. Um, and he straight up admitted that like anybody who understands the etymological or historical context of anarchism understands that we aren't anarchists. Right. Meanwhile, they keep running with the program. And Hans Hermann Hoppe is a uh, professor emeritus of economics at University of Las Vegas, actually. Um, he's a fucking local and he's exactly what you would expect from somebody with the name of like Hans Hermann Hoppe. He's um, he is an uh, uh, he is a fucking raging German white dude who is like the leading theorist in uh, modern right wing libertarianism and uh, so-called anarcho capitalism. And he's got some insane speeches where he talks about why Europe shouldn't allow immigrants from Africa because it'll lower the IQ. Oh, that seems like pretty yeah. wild. Uh, Holy so, shit. So here's your heads up. If you ever encounter uh, Fabian Liberty, Scott, right? Uh, you'll see it. You'll see I, it. I, I, I've talked to him a couple times. He's a hoppist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's actually Hoppian, but I like to do hoppist because it annoys them. Um, <laughs> fucking it's so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He ascribes to uh, Hoppian philosophy. If you actually get get him into a corner off air and like talk to him, he'll straight up tell you that yeah he's a hoppian. So like okay. yeah ethno state fascism basically, with with capitalist overtones. 
yeah yeah i haven't like talked to him on like serious issues um <clears throat> like that mostly because all my interactions and him would be on like debate panels i haven't really <clears throat> followed him on anything else but yeah. okay He's, that's he, good to uh there's good to know for the future yeah there's your heads up there's your heads up and if you ever need any material like i said i got 12 fucking hours on youtube and a playlist <laughs> oh i'm de- i'm gonna have to figure out how to spend the the little time that i have trying to figure out <laughs> some of this stuff because I, I would say you are like heads and shoulders and like miles ahead of me in any of this this uh it, this reading and understanding this stuff yeah uh, to, to quote unquote I, 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 yeah shoot. um I know this is kind of weird. Can I like introduce myself just because I don't know if your audience knows who I am? I, I think th- uh, I think we do, but either way, by all means, introduce yourself. Sure. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I am Fresh Faces New Ideas. I I consider myself a Bernie bro. Um, whatever the the political bent of that is, is I think it's a democratic socialism. Um, that's that's what I ascribe to. I generally stream uh, on. Mondays, and I try to do it during the rest of the week at 7.30 to 9 uh, EST. Um, do you have your, do you have your schedule channel. up on your Twitch page? I do have it. Um, I keep it on my Discord and on my Twitter. Cool. Because uh, it, it, it varies each week um, uh, based on um, if the, the IRL politics stuff that I do intervenes with it, uh, how I'm feeling, or what time I'm spending with my girlfriend. So it. usually it's Mondays, but... I usually try to keep it up as it's either on my Discord or it's uh, you can find me on Twitch at uh, Faces Ideas, and that I usually put it up whenever I'm changing. We uh yeah we we dropped your uh, your link in uh, in chat. We got you a shout out. So oh. uh, uh, Faces uh, Twitter link is there as well. Let me throw you a follow. Uh, here we go. Um, yeah, um, I'm from Vermont originally, so <clears throat> um, I like old school Bernie. I miss him. Oh, I miss him. Um, Look, I, I'm gonna miss him a lot when he's gone because I don't know who who's gonna carry that torch. No one. Uh, no, no, it's unfortunate. Um, but it doesn't seem to be somebody. But yeah, that's uh. So, um, when I came onto this, the the way that I got invited to this was I was talking Crazy. about anarchism mm-hmm. in 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 a way that. I don't see at least how I understand anarchism, how it is capable of solving some of the broader problems that we are currently dealing with. To like, your, for th- example, yeah, I was going to say, throw me something. Change. Change. Oh, okay. So, and then there was, okay. And then there was the the smaller tw- uh, Twitter beef that I saw no. about um, just how it would deal with a pandemic. And to me, the reason I think that. Um, Oh yeah, Fetterman is definitely like Fetterman is one of the guys that I'm like really pulling for as well. Um, the uh, okay, the idea of like how to deal with these things and and to me because of the way I think of anarchism is it's like without a central structure and I'm not entirely sure how you deal with those issues without the existence of like some type of overarching central structure. Here's here's where I have to start having okay, so there's a couple of different topics there, right? Um so let's yeah. let's set COVID aside. We'll we'll circle back around. Um and let's start with climate change, right? Because that was the top of your list. Right? There is yes. no there is no big idea. There is no big idea. Climatological like anthropogenically driven climate change is not gonna be solved by a singular thing, right? I think we can all come to that conclusion at this point. Right, it's going to be a global, you, there's no like one system that can fix it. Yeah, there is no centralized structure that can address anthropogenically driven climate change because it requires literally a ground up methodology to change, right? Human behavior needs to change. And right. the, I mean, you know, if you want to talk to somebody like fucking has he's mid psychotic break right now, but if you want to talk to like, you know, centralizing authoritarian communist or, you know, uh, fascist or that sort of thing, they would argue that their centralized structure could fix it. Um, because they'll, you know, jackboot thug their way into fixing people. Um, but if we uh, leave them out of the conversation, I think most of us would be happy to do that. Um, essentially, what you're dealing with is a distributed topology anyway. You're looking at a grassroots campaign anyway. Welcome to the in this. This is fundamentally where anarchism works, right? This is this is just our bread and butter. Um, so, like, let me do an analogy. Um it's not a direct one to one, but I think I can get the point across. Um, hunger, feeding people, right? It's a problem. Food waste, yes. feeding people, right? 
Um, a lot of organizations attempt to tackle this. One of the most successful organizations that I've ever seen tackle this is Food Not Bombs. They do have they have zero centralized structure. They are a completely hierarchically driven or uh, anarchistically organized structure. They operate in a hundred plus odd countries. I think what we're up to is like a buck thirty two or something like that. They um, they notoriously work off of donations and or um, dumpster diving. They recapture food waste and they provide most more often than not um, healthful vegan meals to anybody who rocks up and wants them. And they utilize that as a methodology to uh, engage in a form of praxis that allows them to have a conversation as equals with people. Right. They haven't solved global hunger, but you know what? They've fed. Pro they've probably put out of several million meals. All right. So they've done more than a lot of organizations that do attempt to feed people and they work on a global scale, but they all work hierarchically, locally, without any centralized structure. So that sort of methodology is easily transferable into other things, such as communal gardens, gardening, such as uh, localized transport systems. Um, you can X, Y and Z it. Um, because the fact of the matter is, as far as cl uh, climate change goes, we're going to need hierarchically uh, uh, driven systems. You can't you can't count on that centralized structure because we already know with a um, let's go with like neoliberal hyper capitalist methodology run amok. Right. You got fucking glo uh, uh, um, uh, all oligarchical globalists that are, you know, have more money than fucking kings used to even dream of. The power of the state combined with the power of the, you know, truly wealthy elite allows for a manipulation of those centralized systems, even um, decentralized systems, because we talk about topology a lot on this uh, on this channel, because uh, anarchism is a OK, let me back up um, three stages of topology, centralized, decentralized, distributed. You're familiar? Kind of. But wait, there's something. Can, <clears throat> can I push back on this? Because yeah, yeah. Um, I do think that there does also there is the ability for a centralized system to have an effect in this. Um, they can, for have, example, they can if, have an effect, but, right, but it's, I see, it's the ability to corrupt and I that think effect that, that is the problem. It's ability. I'm sorry, you you you. It's it's cut out a it's little the way ability to corrupt that effect that's the problem. The centralized structure has a fundamental uh, fatal flaw. And we've seen it time and again when dealing with tobacco companies back in the day or the uh, petrochemical industry or the military industrial complex. Those centralized structures are a single target attack system. Yes. And no, I, I agree with that. And that's an issue. And I do think that one of the ways to actually push for the at least the centralized structure in this way to function correctly in the way that it deals with this is is kind of twofold one it is the hope that they manage to uh the neoliberal part get gets beaten back a little bit uh in 22 and we get one or two more senators in which we can actually pass some type of climate legislation or that they manage to at least do an executive order where they create um some of the incentives for the actual capitalist system in itself to create their own green uh, lobbyists. This is actually something that there's kind of a hope for because the largest um, energy auction just took place and it was buying wind farms off of New Jersey. And that with, with people putting that type of investment in, at least that way, there is there is a hope that some of it will actually kind of steer, steer a little of the corruption into a more profitable industry, which I'm not saying is the ideal solution, but I'm saying it was it is a possible massive solution that could help us in a way that kind of the grassroots wouldn't have the same type of effect um cupcake uh who's probably due on this channel it's a fucking thing um it's not going to happen anytime soon the fact of the matter is is that we needed to start 50 years ago so the, oh, gra no, I agree. the grassroots solution happens today um and so as far as like auto uh order consendai or prioritization lists go um, I think on the prioritization list, the grassroots distributed methodology should be at the top of our thing. Um, as far as an anarch anarchism goes, I tell anarchists, 51% of what you do is education. Um, uh, 50 I'm sorry, 50% of what you do is education. 49% of what you do is direct action. 1% of what you do is voting. Right? Don't, don't abstain. Don't go Emma Goldman. Because localized election and regional elections are probably the more uh, important thing that you can, one of the more important things you can address as far as like down ticket voting, right? Federalized elections are fucking garbage. I'm sorry, they are. That's, they're, they're garbage and they've been garbage my entire lifetime. Uh, may I ask, how old are you? 
I'm 29. Ah, well, okay. A little uh, old enough to have had su- some hope beaten out of you, at least. Um, Look, I I, 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 I voted for Obama the second time. Uh, the, uh, I was very, I thought Bernie was going to win. Nevada, <laughs> Nevada, Nevada. 20, 2020 was like the last time I was happy. <laughs> no, it, it's, by the um, way, the locals, I live in Vegas. It's Nevada. They're very particular about it. Oh, okay. I'm from, I'm from, yeah, like, I'm, I'm from, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, like, I'm from Vermont originally. My original pronunciation was Nevada as well. Cause Nevada sounds fucking Southern, but it is, it's, they're very particular and candidates get raked over the coals when they come here and they say Nevada. Um, it's one of those things. Nevadans are very particular about it for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, um, I, I, I just think that like, okay, sure. Maybe that could help. And if it can help, Let's not discount it. But as far as like the more effective solutions that are tangible now and can actually change things for people on the ground, like as far as I, I tell anarchists all the time, right? Like go make a sandwich. Right? Cause I, I've, I've had like, I've had the, the disillusioned come to me a lot. Like, how do you even maintain it? Like, I don't know what to, you know, people get lost in the, the big problems. You can't do that. That's not how that works. You're not Jeff Bezos, right? You're not Bill Gates. You don't have that kind of power within the system. You're a node in a network. So understand that you have nodal power within a network and start operating that way. Understand cybernetic theory. Understand topological management, right? Start grasping these concepts and go fucking make a sandwich because you may not be able to change the life of that dude on the corner, but you know what? You can make sure he doesn't go hungry tonight. And that is an ethical and moral win. So like that's how I approach a lot of those sorts of topics is that, yeah, maybe that stuff can work. And maybe we were talking about anthropogenically driven climate change and uh, technological solutions last night, actually, on the After Dark show. And we, you know, I'm a technologist, dude. I I was, my mom put me in front of a mainframe terminal at age four. I spent my life in IT. Um, I am a through and through technologist. Um, I'm a transhumanist, Um, not the weird eugenics kind, just the kind of like, give me some cool tech so I can hook it up kind. I'm, I'm not, you know, I, I, I'm not putting money on that fucking number on, on the roulette, uh, on the roulette wheel, for sure. I'm not putting money down on that. I don't think we can technologize our way through it. And even if we do, that's going to act as a great filter and probably the really wealthy and really uh, and elites of our society are going to be the ones to pass through that filter. And I don't, af- I don't find that ethically satisfying. So I would much rather advocate for a system that I, uh, I've seen historically and contemporarily can, uh, can contextually supr- uh, uh, support people. Right. Um, During the Spanish Civil War, during the whole Franco bullshit, right? 50 percent of agriculture and industry in Spain during the Spanish Civil War is being produced by anarchistic communes. Right. Like that's that they were literally supporting half of the country in the middle of the Civil War. Right. That's and not just like, you know, not just fucking growing vegetables, though they were growing vegetables and raising animals. They were providing the fucking gear, too. Right. They were building. And so, like, this is this is something anarchists are notoriously, historically, and contemporarily both very good at, right? Um, the anarchistic Republic of Caspia lasted for 375 years in between the Papal States and, uh, I, oh, God, which I always forget which Italian empire it was. Either way, um, do they outcompeted them economically to the point where the Papal States, like, uh, uh, literally um, encircled Caspia? And forced them to surrender their sovereignty because they were out competing them economically. It, it, and they're like a strip of land, a, a few miles in size, right? When the, the, the Jewish population within Italy was being persecuted by the, uh, the Catholic Church, where did the Jews all flee to? They fled to Cospia because they were welcome there because the anarchists didn't give a shit. They're like, well, whatever, come on, you can live with us and be productive. We'll fucking build some shit, right? Um, Trumbleplex outside of Detroit successfully has been interfacing with the capitalist modality since, oh, I don't know what they're up to now, 27, 28 years, something like that. Maybe even more. Jeez, fuck, I'm old. Um, either way, they've got residences on site. They've got their own internet. They've got their own library. They've got their own, um, artistic space, per- space, performance space, all of that sort of stuff. They do food production on site and they successfully interface with the capitalist, uh, society surrounding them. So while Detroit was crumbling around them, Trumbleplex was just kind of chugging along because it didn't, it doesn't affect anarchist methods of operation. Um, so like I, I, I don't, I've been doing this a long time 
a long time. Like I started in the streets and then I, I about like age 28, 29, I started like doing the like, okay, if I'm gonna really do this, I need to know what's underpinning it, right? It's been a bunch of fucking years becoming a theory head on top of that. I, I'm i not like a lot of these fuckers online, right? Like I'm not grifting. I actually do believe the shit I say, crazy as it is, right? I'm an actual true blue believer. Um, and it's not because of like an identity wrapped up within it, in, in, within it. It's not an aesthetic. It's functionality. The proof of the pudding is in the eating. And I've eaten that pudding several times, right? I've, I've operated with, you know, and, uh, like uh, hierarchically organized operations and worker driven co-ops and those sorts of things that are all part and parcel with the anarchist milieu and the anarchist theories. So when it comes to big problems, I don't see them as necessarily big problems because I'm used to like code switching between micro and macrocosmic scale. And that's just something anarchists do all the time because the network is the macrocosm, but the node is the microcosm and the empowerment and uh, creation of the network is done through the empowerment of the autonomy of the individual. And so it, it, these, as you know, as a technologist, I understand this I inherently as well. I've done network engineering. I understand cybernetic theorism, right? Like I, I understand the power of a distributed network. I understand its resiliency. And I also, you know, I've seen the studies and I've read and partaken, like, you know, the DOD has studied this. The British Architectural Association has uh, has studied this. As far as uh, worker-driven, heterarchically organized uh, architectural, uh, architectural firms versus centralized hierarchical, and it, they're more productive. They have higher happiness rates. They have higher resiliency rates. They have higher um, uh, uh, client success rates. Like across the board, this is a better method to operate and organize around. It's also much harder to dis, uh, disrupt, which when we're talking about these sorts of big scale issues um, is is kind of it's kind of a thing. Because let's face it, we, you know, we, we could look back at what the, um, you know, the tobacco industry, for example. Right. We, we know. Look at the Black Panthers. Look at Fred Hampton. Take your fucking pick. Look at Nixon and the anti-war protesters, right? The system will do anything to maintain the po and the power base, right? To maintain the status quo. That's why those police exist, after all. Um, and we have we have the documents from the state to tell you who they're actually afraid of and who they're truly confused by. I read the other night the ADA challenge. It's not the American Disabilities Act. It's the anarchist direct action challenge to a uh, challenge for law enforcement document. It's a hilarious read. Even law enforcement doesn't understand how anarchists truly operate. It's um, let's see. Infl infiltration is made more difficult by the communal nature of the lifestyle and the extensive knowledge held by many anarchists, which require a considerable amount of study to acquire. Um, therefore, it does not require much money to facil facilitate subsistence and travel. Little is known of the financing structure for that kind of work. The nature of the movement's suspicion and operational security enhance enhancements makes infiltration difficult and time consuming. And few agencies are able to commit to operations that require years of upfront work for getting into one, especially given shrinking budgets and increased demands for attention to other issues. So like we we already know as anarchists that like our methodology not only is effective from a productive standpoint, a communal standpoint, an ethical standpoint, we also know it's effective as far as undermining statist infiltration goes because the state has told us straight up it is. So like this, this is a thing that works and the way I would um, encourage you to look at, approach and learn about anarchism it's a lens of analysis and a tool belt, right? Don't don't look at it any other way. A lot of anarchists would tell you one way to this, 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 and this, right? Think of a, a fucking toolbox and a way of looking at things. Anarchism provides you a methodology to analyze your world around you, and then it gives you a series of tools from which you can draw. So if you've got a screwdriver, use a screw. Uh, if you've got a screw, use a screwdriver, right? Don't be fucking hammering a screw in, which is what a lot of people attempt to do within like statist hi uh, hierarchical structures, right? Oh, well, if we get the right representative in, then maybe we can pass the legislation. It's like, yeah, but what you were talking about was food insecurity in your local community. Why don't you just directly address the food insecurity in your local community instead? 
That seems like a far more direct, better, and controllable solution to me than trying to reform a system that's going to resent and attempt to repel you at every turn. Okay. I mean, that that makes sense. That argument does make sense. So can I ask then what, uh, before we get onto the, the COVID <clears throat> issue, what do you think has been kind of like holding this movement back is it the fact that it's just generally the system it's fighting against or it's that the messengers aren't good enough or that the effective messengers aren't showing like you were talking about uh city state that lasted for three centuries like like is what is the what is the issue that's not allowing this to basically flourish in a, in a way where it can encompass more than kind of like an abs- absurd um, like uh, no okay <laughs> yeah uh correct okay so two things one uh the three tent poles it's it's an essay i wrote and you, it's worth reading somebody put the link in chat so you can grab it um you need to read the tent poles essay um it's not long um but fundamentally there's a couple of things working against but also there's a contextual thank you wither uh grab that um the three temples of american oppression um so there's a couple of things. One, it actually has been successful. See, that's the thing is the uh, uh, Westerners, uh, developed nations, uh, people who grow up in hierarchical power structures, they have these weird definitions of success, right? Like he's not successful. Why? Because he doesn't own three BMWs, right? Like that's, that's the one. I want to challenge the definitional set of success that, that you're utilizing. Um, it has been successful, just not in the way that most people who are used to statist structures would define success. Um, two, there have been setbacks and losses. Um, fundamentally, what you're dealing with is we are the we are the antithesis of statist structures, right? When it comes to authoritarianism, the cure is anarchism, and so we are constantly embattled with uh, groups that are completely and utterly willing to put a bullet in the back of our head. Historically speaking, we actually have more beef with communists than we do with capitalists. Communists have killed more. Oh no, I absolutely understand that. That yeah. is, is, is a very yeah. Know, they've uh, ca- communists have killed more anarchists than capitalists have. Like the body count on their side is far higher. Um, oh, I, I yeah, I know that the uh, the idea that like different groups fight each other rather than fighting like the fascist always allow the fascist to win. <clears throat> um. So. We're, we are the cure to authoritarianism. So the authoritarians are the ones who are always willing to go jackbooted thug on you, right? Like they're always willing to fucking just crack skulls. Two, um, we have been successful just not in the ways that traditional society would define. And three, um, the thing that was holding us back the most would be this thing that's holding everyone back the most, which harkens back to that temp- three temples of oppression. The three temples of oppression are um, a poverty of philosophy, a financial hamster wheel, and the police state. So the poverty of philosophy, not the uh, the Proudhonian, Marxian, like um, back and forth. If you're from you, you're not a theory head, so you're probably not familiar. Either way, um, poverty of philosophy is my um, my usage of a term, uh, a phrase that hasn't been in in um in vogue for a very long time but essentially what it is is um you were denied the tools of analysis you were denied the tools of knowledge you were denied the tools of theory of philosophy you were denied the tools necessary to you to truly comprehend understand dismantle and replace the struct the hierarchical and authoritarian authoritative structures within society why because it's rare that the authoritarian o- who controls your life is going to give you the tools necessary to topple them right teachers don't ha- tell you how to undermine teachers your parents don't tell you how to undermine them that's not how uh, authoritarianism works so um people have been denied those tools and that's the poverty of philosophy it's um you you speak to a person's experiences right if you can't if if uh, re- uh, rhetorically speaking if you cannot speak to somebody's experiences then you cannot speak to that person because they have no context plato's cave theory right um mm-hmm. so without those tools of understanding then essentially we don't speak the same language now 
Those have been denied to you through a variety of social manipulations. You could go back to uh, the sort of like John Taylor Gatto level of our educational system is built off the Prussian regimentation system in combination with a series of uh, rich uh, eugenicists. That's sort of the foundation of the American educational public educational system is let's create dumb workers who are ready to go off and die for us like that. That is that's what it's based upon. Um, and so you have that sort of system that is constructed that way. And then you have the Madison Avenue, um, Edward Bernays methodology of propagandization and uh, inundation from, I mean, day one, literally. And then, you know, your entirety of your life, you met, uh, you met that with um, the financial hamster wheel. Right. Most people don't have the time. I've been incredibly lucky in my life to have had a very strange upbringing and uh, a lot of downtime and lax time due to my particular early start in IT. I was doing custom programming by age 14. Right. Like I had I had a leg up. Um, and so I had a lot of time to sit back, study, get involved, do these sorts of things, X, Y, and Z. Most people are caught on the financial hamster wheel, right? You're working one, two, three jobs just to try and survive and scrape by in the society. You don't have time to sit down and fucking, I mean, here, I'm going to hold up on fucking screen, right? Here's, here's property is theft. Here's, here's Proudhon, right? Here's, here's Marshall. Here's demanding the impossible. That's just two books, right? Like that's, that's just two books. Most people don't have the time, and again, hearkening back to the poverty of philosophy, they don't have the tools necessary to even comprehend a lot of it. Even if they were to have the time to sit down and read, you know, uh, uh, Proudhonian fucking theory, what? Why is property theft? What is this about? What is the differentiation between personal, private, and public? How does this, you know, where is it born from? What is the Lockean proviso? Hell, who is Locke even, right? Um, so they don't have that time to do that because they are captured within a coercive, uh, oppressive uh, economic system that keeps them on that hamster wheel. And as far as the essay goes, the the um, the hypothetical that I, I grant, I said, now let's just pretend that there's a, a magic wand or a fairy can uh, give you, you know, a genie can grant you a wish. And we magically erase the poverty of philosophy and the financial hamster wheel. And everybody has the tools necessary to understand how they're getting fucked and who they're getting fucked by. And they're able to like garner further tools and understanding, right? You haven't done anything about the police state. And as a, you know, as a protester, I was an Occupy organizer, right? And I've, I've been in the street. I've done shit. I am, trust me, right? The first people that show up are the cops. The first fucking people that show up are the cops, right? I've been there at an organizing meeting where a dude in like a, a, like a painter's fucking uniform with thousands of dollars of DSLR gear and a telephoto lens is like literally just walking around the circle of organizers taking close-up shots of our faces and shit like that, right? I've been there for that stuff. Um, and as a student of history, I also, you know, and fuck, you, you know, Pinkertons, COINTELPRO, MLK, take your fucking pick. The Wilson administration is responsible, by the way, for the uh, uh, public thinking anarchy means chaos. That starts with the, the Wilson administration and a series of pamphlet, anti-communist, anti-socialist and anti-anarchist pamphlets that they spread around. That's, that's the origin point of anarchy meaning chaos. And in fact, it actually means uh, anarchos is derived from Greek. It's, it's an without arcos rulers. Prior to that, nobody had this concept of like anarchy meaning chaos. It was just a rulerless methodology that goes back to indigenous societies even. And so propaganda is a bitch. And so that's, that's just sort of what we're dealing with there on that final tentpole is that we live within a police state. And I, you know, if you happen to know a person from a marginalized community or a person of color, chances are they can uh, more, uh, they can further enlighten you as to the nature of our police state and exactly how um, disruptive it can be as far as organizing attempts and efforts go. And so that is sort of how I would contextualize and answer that question in a broad scheme. I would say, one, we have been successful. Two, you, uh, um, in the instances where we haven't been successful, we've been up against like the USSR. We've been up against the United States military. We've been uh, we've been up against the British Empire. We've been up against you know the fucking China. Uh, uh, we've been up against China. We've been up against Korea. We've been up against you know these sorts of entities 
that, yeah, um, okay, so maybe we lost, right? right? Nestor Makhno in Ukraine lost to Lenin after a while, but he held his own for a long stretch. Uh, long stretch. But how many other ideologies fucking got, got their skulls kicked in by that as well? Right? Like, so... And the, so it's like sort of an unfair playing field to even roll that one out. And then third point is that the things that are holding us back are holding uh, are holding everybody back. Later, Kibot. Okay. I mean, that's oh, I that's a lot. Um, there was you know you were you have a, a lot of information. You feel like it's been a while since I've had a conversation <clears throat> with somebody who is a world that is just like heads and shoulders above where where i was sitting um just just from experience wise but no i i do understand and i agree with what what you're talking about especially you know when you're talking about the the inability to have the tools the inability to have um like to deal with the police state uh um it's like that are like agree no i agree and i understand because i think a lot of the the issues that you were describing you can find other ideologies making the same argument um uh, uh, very often like people when they they ascribe things to like socialism they don't know what the fuck they're talking about yes. or it's very similar it's kind of like a similar ideology issue where you're not giving the tools um to understand I, what you're i don't know how many times i've had to explain to somebody that socializing and socialism are not the ex and not the same thing Sociali yeah, it's, socializing it, a cost is not the same as socialism no, it's it's very like no, I I do agree with that, and um, no, I think you look, you have a lot more historical accuracies, a lot more um, just broader ideology, and <clears throat> I do. I wish I had more time to spend to at least follow more of these streams, if not uh, to spend some time doing readings to at least get closer to your level. Because a lot of times I don't try to get into philosophical arguments. I'm, when I'm uh, talking to people, it's mm -hmm. it's mostly arguing the the issues for like data and stuff. So like I haven't really had like a this is probably the closest thing I've gotten to like a philosophical argument. Uh, and this isn't even an argument because this it, I, it's essentially a child fighting a, a giant. Well, it's not even well. It, it is argument. as far as a rhetorician is concerned. This is an argument. You and I are having a two way street, and it's not combative, so it's not a fight. So. As, uh, as far as a rhetorician is concerned, like, this is a productive conversation. Well, this is this is good. This is like the, this is like a, a good thing for me to, to to learn a lot of this. So, the other reason, the other thing I brought up was COVID. Now, the the did, argument I've did a seen great for job with that one. This, yeah, no, I look. I actually think one of the the best things that came out of COVID is the fact that it just showed that every single one of our systems are flawed. They all. That on okay. every single level we had systemic failures, and that shows that there has to be change. Like that, going back is not the answer because there was systemic failures all across the board, and it reviewed all of them. Whether we learn from those or or not, which we clearly kind of haven't. I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna go with we not. Just had, <laughs> we just had one of the strangest updates I've ever seen, which was like that the Biden administration cannot afford to purchase fourth shots <laughs> we always got tanks we, and, we always got bombs and bullet money we always got bombs and bullet money though i like, literally bought and it's not like covid is currently spiking it this is it, it, this so is it's, this it's, is the it's argument frustrating with that is oh i agree i uh for that but like so the reason i bring this up partly is because the the argument that I saw, and now because I've lost certainly lost um, a lot of my time when I started working, the argument there was was a couple of uh, I think they're anarchists on Twitter. Um, mm, their okay. argument was basically that the way to solve like medicine problems in an anarchist solution is basically just learn how to make medicine and create your own small like. Uh, shops in each commune type of thing it was like an incredibly thing that basically is like if you don't have somebody smart enough to do this you're fucked okay so here's 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 i would okay so this is where the technologist in me is more capable of answering this question than a lot of anarchists 
because a lot of fucking anarchists just don't understand cybernetic theory. And you're going to hear me mention that a few times. Cybernetic theory is an umbrella t- term for a series of, uh, of fields of study. It, most people hear cybernetics and they're like, pros- like robot prosthetics. It's not what cybernetic theory is about. But this is where the technologist in me comes out to bear. Do you, are you aware of the Open Insulin Project? The Open Insulin Project? Uh-huh. No, I'm not aware. Okay, you need to look it up. First off, you need to, you need to know about these people just so you know about these people. Um, are you aware? Uh, are you familiar with like I don't know your technological like I don't know your uh, 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 your technolo- technological literacy uh, level, but um, are you do you understand open source? Yeah, it's 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 um it allows like anyone to work with it, right? Okay, do you understand that the internet is basically driven by open source technologies? The, the platforms that we're running on and operating right now, even though they're proprietarily run corporate platforms, are all based on open source technologies. All of that open source technology was built with a basically communistically driven uh, um, fucking uh, profit incentive, i.e. none. All of it was done hierarchically, therefore ANCOM. Right. It is done of the community in a distributed fashion for the good and creation of the project at people's own pacing and volition. The Open Insulin Project is a project being done by a series of biochemists and bioengineers to create a modern pharmacologically standardized open sourced insulin project. Then once they are done and they have their testing set, they are going to release the entirety of the project open source to the world. Therefore, it, the difficult work has been done. They will have a materials list. They will have a formu- formulary. They will have a procedures list. Therefore, any isolated group in the world that can at least get their hands on the equipment and uh, have somebody who understands the process at least can, can grow essentially their own insulin for their community. So this is my answer, is that, in fact, open source technologies have already answered the COVID issue. And we operate within, open source technologies operate within the medical sphere all the time. There's tons of open source medical projects. And in fact, there was initially work on an open source COVID project. And the open source technologies don't have to be... Um, uh, solely the work of like a couple of hackers in a garage anywhere, right? There's an MIT open source license. There's a Berkeley software development license, right? The universities and like hallowed halls of learning and education can get in on these processes as well. You don't have to, um, you can have clusters of nodes in a distributed network that are uh, associated with each other that are integrated into that distributed network as well. It's the overall tonality and organization of that network that matters and centralizing through um like um her hierarchically and capital capitalistically driven far, uh, pharmacology companies is an issue because they wall off their technology and so like that's the answer the anarchist answer is open source technologies and the the proof of the put uh, the proof of the eating of the pudding on that one is us communicating the way we are right now Right, I'm looking at uh, a, a, I'm looking at an OBS panel right now. The thing driving all of this is open source. The protocols underneath it are all open source. Right? Like that's that's what built our modern world was a series of technologists that said, "Yeah, I don't need to get paid. I just want to create this product. I just want to create this thing because let's create this thing." And they self-organize, they self-produce, and we have products that make billion dollar entities billions of dollars because of the power of those products okay no that does make sense so then i have a question the uh the currently the the covid cure that they're working on with the military is that one considered open source then the 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 soccer ball one that's supposed to be able to handle i don't know 24 different variants is it open source um I don't think I ever remember seeing anything on it either way. Uh, let's see. Military COVID vaccine. Let me check. Let me just check. No, it is not. Um, it does not look like it. Um, though, if it is being... Um, 
if it's being developed by the government, there are clauses in place that will cause them to, they can't, um, they can't turn it into proprietary technology. So essentially they can't issue a patent for it. Um, what they can do is treat it as a national security issue for a number of years and protect it that way. They can classify it as like a governmental secret, national security issue, and they can protect the, the technology that way for a number of years. But uh, fundamentally, they can't copyright or patent it because if it is, it, if it is developed in-house using government funds, um, then yeah, it, it belongs to the people. And there's a series of laws that classify that. But it is an open source. No. Well, to be honest, I ran out of things to talk about very quickly. Um, I think you've answered, you've, you've certainly have answered everything in a way that I find satisfactory, in a way that I don't find any inconsistencies with what you've sta said. Do you, um, do you want some homework? I certainly, do, you, do I want homework? Yeah, it's just some reading, um, just some reading. Besides the, the, uh, the article you already sent me? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give you um, where you want to start um, if you want um, uh, fucking usually over here. The Government of No One by Ruth Kinna, K-I-N-N-A. The Government of No One. Um, it's a very good primer. Um, if you want something shorter than that, um, but Ruth will get you basically... Um, Ruth will get you, like, will explain historical context, uh, context, she'll explain, like, topological issues, she'll explain, like, intersectionality, she'll explain some of the personalities and authors behind. So it's a really good primer for people. It's about, eh, yay thick, it's not too bad, a few hundred pages. You can work through it in your own time. Um, but it's a good starting place. All right, I can, I uh, will try to get around to that. There's a lot of, uh... I know. Trust me, my, really my reading list is a mile long, Anywhere man. Be... Yeah, and uh, as somebody who doesn't even have time for, like, uh, as a guy who really likes fantasy, hearing that one of my famous fantasy authors has five new books coming out because of the pandemic, I'm super excited for that. Uh, I gotta figure out time to read this in my one hour free time a day. <laughs> oh, that's, yeah, that's a fucking, <laughs> that's a thing. Um, yeah, um, I, I summed up the, the, the Ten Poles essay for you pretty effectively. You don't necessarily need to read it. I do have other essays on, the, uh, on that website if you, you know, want to avail yourself uh, self of them. Um, the origins of and problems with modern policing is always good ammunition, and it's not necessarily anarchistic. It's just a fucking um, a, a really good walkthrough of the sort of the history and how it came to be and bear. Uh, and is useful for anybody who's dealing with that side of uh, authoritarianism in our society. Okay. All right. I'll do my best to, to do this. I'm certainly going to try to tune in for the next stream. Uh, obviously, the three hour gap is. The VODs always go up on YouTube. So, uh, the, and the YouTube is. Um, YouTube, is YouTube dot com slash C slash proudly radical. YouTube load, and then I can pull it up. Um, it should be Probably. there. Yeah, the VODs always go up. And there's one-off segments. There's um, re theory reading we're working on building out there. Um, there's content. There's content. So, yeah. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Uh, I, I found this uh, very enlightening. Um, I... Uh, your, your community is very welcoming and I uh, hope you guys have a good night and maybe we'll talk again in the future yeah um, like I said uh, you're on the discord if you've got questions if you do start reading or you're just like hey what would x y and z dude somebody's always around to answer or that sort of thing so yeah thanks for stopping alright man I appreciate yeah. it thank you yeah take care of yourself man catch you later uh, fresh faces new ideas everyone <laughs> go, go follow them if you haven't already let's uh, 